So I like to start with the cover. So for our project, you're going to need some um, medium weight chipboard and I'm using black artisan cardstock. The chipboard pieces that we're going to need for the cover, um, you're going to need two that are five and a half by eight and a half, one that's eight and a half by 11, and two that are two by eight and a half. So this is a gatefold. And so we'll need one longer one for the back, two spines, and then two front flaps. Now the black cardstock to wrap those, I have them listed here. You're going to need one that's 10 and a half by 12, two that are seven and a half by 10 and a half, two that are five by 10 and a half, and then you're going to need two pieces that measure four and a half by eight and three eighths, and that's to cover the spine on the inside of the book. Okay. Now you're going to want to prepare all your chipboard by placing some sort of adhesive on the back. I'm using I had to cut and piece some of the score tape sheets that I have because I don't like to waste anything so that's why it's kind of mishmet, you know kind of a mixture of different score tapes but all of them get score tape on the back that's what I use so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the two spine pieces now the spine pieces have a little bit um, larger um, wing span I like to call it on either side of the chipboard so usually we do a one inch border the spine is going to have one and a half inch borders on each side and then one inch at the top and one inch at the bottom so this is the piece that is five by ten and a half i believe yep let me double check yep five by ten and a half and so what i'm going to do i'm going to take this off so i can use my spacers from the store so i'm going to grab I'm going to place my paper on my scoreboard. I'm going to place the one inch spacer at the top and then the one and a half inch on the side so that I can place my chipboard exactly in the right spot. So I'll bump it up on the left and the top and then I'll have the one and a half inch and the one inch uh, borders. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of my score tape. And sometimes that's what takes me longer than anything. That's why the sheets are nice because you don't have to get started. It's just one. All right. Now I've already done one of these spine pieces. So this is my second one. You're going to do this to both of your spine pieces. And then just go ahead, like I said, and bump it up on the side and at the top. You're going to want to burnish your paper so that it adheres real well. So do uh, lay both of your spine pieces out. Once you have them on the paper, now we are going to wrap it. And the spine pieces we wrap a little bit differently. So what I like to do is I first fold the paper up and over the chipboard and then I go ahead and burnish it so it has a natural fold. I do the short sides and the long side, so all four. Okay, so now that we have our Scores, I am going to take out the rectangles in the corner and so I'm going to go up to the chipboard corner and over to the chipboard corner and I'll do that on all four corners. Okay. So the only two sides that we're going to bring up over the chipboard are the two short sides. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just use some of my art glitter glue and I'm going to run a bead up against the chipboard here and then on the upper part. Okay. 
And I just want to make sure that I press that down and let it stick real well. And I am going to go ahead and burnish the edge. And let's repeat that on the other side. Again, you're doing this to two. You have two spines. So now I'm going to miter slightly on the side here. I'm going to actually go up. Ooh, I need my glasses on. I can't see. Okay, now I can see. I have a little bit of overhang here that I just want to snip off. Ooh. I got glue in here. Okay, and then let's do that to the other side miter. Okay, so that's what it looks like, slight miter on each end of the short side. We're going to move that off to the side after you've done both pieces. And now I'm going to take my, you have two of the uh, pieces that measure five and, uh, is that right? Five and a half by eight and a half. Oh, you know what? Let's, uh, let me do something first before I forget. Um, because this is a spine piece and we're opening and closing our book quite a bit, I do want to go ahead and not just have it fold to the inside like this, but I also want to train it to go the other direction also. And so I just like to run my bone folder up against that chipboard and you'll see a, a definite ridge because the way we place the book together you're going to have something resting right here and so we want to make sure that it that paper is pressed down like so. How did I get glue on that? I haven't. I mean it's going to be covered but ugh. There we go. Okay, so you can see a definite ridge. Now because this is artisan, you can be a little bit more firm. You have to be careful if you're not using artisan cardstock. So this next piece of chipboard is five and a half by eight and a half, and our uh, paper is seven and a half by ten and a half. So go ahead and lay that on your board. We are going to use the two one inch spacers. If you don't have these, just use one inch pieces of chipboard or a ruler, whatever you like to work with. We're gonna remove the backing just like the other one and we're gonna place it down. This one we do wrap on all four sides, not just two. And go ahead and lay that down, bumping it up against the side, oopsie, and the top. Then let's go ahead and burnish that. So we get a good stick. Now this one I use more than just glue. I also use my score tape. So I'm going to get my 1 fourth inch score tape. And just like we did the other one, we do want to train the paper to fold. So you're doing this, remember, I've already done one. So this is what it looks like when after we've wrapped it. We're going to do all four sides. So one side is completed, and then you have that one inch border. And to me, the cover is one of the most important things. It's the first thing you see. You want to make sure it's strong and durable. It gets a lot of use. And you want to make sure it's nice and neat and that you have crisp corners and edges, no ripples. Your chipboard is covered well so you don't see any corners sticking out. 
Now I will tell you that I do these pieces differently. You can do just like we did on the other one where you cut out the rectangles, in this case squares, um, in the corners. You can cut out these squares. I do a, an angled miter. You do whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'm going to place score tape on the perimeter of my chipboard piece. And I, uh, this is one fourth inch that I'm using. And you're going to do that to all four sides. Excuse me. A lot of you have probably made this cover before, so you can skip through this, obviously, if you know it, if you are comfortable with what how we do this. This was um, the... Um, store owner Tammy is the one who came up with this idea for the wrapping to help people who kind of struggled with the other way so it's a lot of people really like it so I have this tool that um, when you miter at an angle you want to leave a little bit of uh, paper at the corner whereas if you cut out the square you can go right to the corner so this tool just kind of makes sure that I leave the right amount of paper I'm just going to go ahead and grab my blade here and I'm going to slice at an angle all four corners. The only bad thing about this tool is that this part's not long enough and so I have to go back and cut the paper off after I slice it, but that's okay. At least I know I'm leaving enough paper. Okay. So just like we put uh, score tape on the perimeter of the chipboard, I also am going to put a piece of score tape along the perimeter on my cardstock. And I want it to have a nice strong hold and I don't want anything flapping up. And so I think by placing the score tape on the edge, it really makes sure that it's a smooth it's real smooth when you wrap it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and burnish that just so that when I take the backing off, the tape stays on and doesn't come up. I like to do my long sides first. So what I'm going to do is remove the backing on the two sides of chipboard and the two on uh, the long side down here. So let's go ahead and run that bead of glue up against the chipboard. so that the paper really grabs a hold. And then I'm going to fill in this middle section between the chipboard and the score tape with glue. I bring it up and over and I kind of push up and out so that I don't get any creases. And then you burnish. And I also then do the edge, just like we did before, so we have a nice smooth edge here. Let's repeat that on the other side, the long side. Excuse me. And get our art glitter glue. Bring it up and over. I kind of start in the center and go out. Always burnish. And do the edge. So now because of how I miter my corners, I have to tuck a little piece of paper that there's a little excess down here in the corners and I just have to push that down so that it goes around the corner of my chipboard. And for some reason I just like that angled look. That's why I don't do the squares on my, it's not that, I mean it doesn't make that much difference. You cover it with paper, but I'm going to, I guess I'm kind of old school on that part.
fill in the middle. So when I bring mine up and over, I have to just make sure that these are tucked down in and they're pushed down. And I really like that angled look. Looks like a real book. Let's repeat that on the other end. If you did the square, you don't have to worry about your chipboard corner being covered. It will be covered. And then you're going to go ahead and do that with the other five and a half by eight and a half inch piece too. So we have our two flaps done. So our book is quite long. It's 11 inches long. Okay. We have our two spine pieces that we're going to use to attach the book together. And so now we need to do that back piece. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Yep, 11 by eight and a half. And our paper is 10 and a half by 12. So we will have one inch borders on the eight and a half inch side, like um, there's one inch on each side, but on these short ends, up, we're only gonna have about a half an inch because if our chipboard's 11 and our paper's 12. So normally you have a one inch overlap. Today we're just gonna have a, a half inch and it still works fine with no problem. So I need to get my one inch spacer. And I'm just gonna place it on this side here. Remove all this backing. I have little tiny pieces. I just can't bear to throw away, so I just fill in. So I don't have a one half inch spacer, so I am going to just use the measurements on my scoreboard to help me put it in the right spot. So I know it's going to bump all the way up against the spacer, but I need to come down about a half an inch. And I'm just going to look at top and bottom to make sure they're about even. That looks about right. Oops, sorry, I'm bumping my camera. this again you can choose to do the corners that you cut out or you can cut them at an angle I'm gonna go ahead and stand it up and just kind of get that fold
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my tool again and miter the corners. the same process so we're going to go ahead and put our 1 4 inch score tape on the perimeter of the chipboard do that with our paper also. So one thing about this technique or this uh, method of wrapping is that your book lays flat. And so, uh, especially with a gatefold, that's going to be very nice so that you can have everything nice and easy to see because you don't have something, one of the sides sticking up while you're looking at the inside. Always burnish. So I am going to start with my long sides again. I'm removing the backing of the bottom and the sides so that my paper doesn't end up on one of the backings. And go ahead and run that bead of glue fill in the middle section between the score tape and the chipboard. Do the other long side now. As we do the short size, you're going to see that it doesn't look as nice on the inside because things don't line up as well because the two sides are one inch and the top and bottom are half, but you cover that with paper so you don't notice. So as we do the short ends now, I have to tuck my paper around the corner of my chipboard. If you cut out the squares, you don't have to do that. So you'll see right here, it doesn't meet, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
and we are almost done with the book covering part or construction of the cover Now we're going to put all five pieces of our chipboard together to form the cover. So the way we lay this out, let me put my pin in my glue. The way we lay this out is this is the back piece, so the large piece is going to be in the center. We're then going to place the two spine pieces on either end of that large piece, so you'll have the connector pieces attached to the long, and then the last on the outside we have the five and a half inch piece. So. Medium size, small, big, small, medium size. And this will go on the other end. So this is pretty long. So um, I'm going to get move this. Some people use their scoreboard as a way to line up the chipboard, but I'm going to do it, eyeball it. So what we do is we're going to attach the book by placing these wings on the inside at the raw side. And so to prepare our spine piece, you turn it so that you see the covered side. And you're going to use score tape and you go almost to the crease, but not all the way because you And I put one on the other end. And I'm also going to place one in the center. Let's do the same thing on the other wing. You know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and while I'm doing this, might as well do the other spine the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on that one too, just so it's prepped. So even though this uh, art glitter glue dries clear on black, sometimes you can still see it. So I'm not going to put any glue um, on the uh, any closer to the chipboard piece of my spine. I'm just going to fill in glue in between my score tape, my three score tape strips. So grab your medium and your spine and what we're going to, I'm going to have to trim this when I take the backing off because I can see an overhang of tape, but we are actually going to flip it upside down so we can see it better. And we're going to lay this piece of chipboard on top of that wing and we're going to bump it up all the way against the chipboard. 
it goes right up to that piece. It bumps up against it. You don't have to leave any space. So remove the backing of one side first. I am going to put a little bit of glue, like I said, in between my score tape pieces. But not any up against the chipboard part. So I have a little bit of tape overhang, so I want to bring that over. So I'm going to actually, well, let's see. I'm going to make sure we line it up top and bottom, pushing up against there. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to burnish. Make sure it's attached real well. So now we're going to attach the long piece to the other side. So again, I'm going to flip that over. This really bothers me. That's one bad thing about using black is I can see everything. Okay, so the long piece is going to bump right up against this one. So we're going to have to make sure we look at the top and the bottom to make sure we have it lined up real well. See, sorry. Oh, I hate it when I do that. It probably makes you dizzy. Fill in with some glue here. Bump it right up against the chipboard. Flip it over and burnish it. So now we're ready for another spine piece. It's going to go on the other side of the long back piece. This does get pretty long. So can you imagine like the way we used to wrap it? Wow, that would, it makes it makes it it's more cumbersome for sure when it's that long to work with but you are more than welcome obviously to do the cover that way if you prefer I know a lot of people do still prefer to do it that way and sometimes I still do too so I'm going to turn this upside down Make sure that this is lined up and butted up right up against the chipboard. And I burnish. last piece to attach and that's that five and a half inch piece and that's going to go right up on the other side here If you have any overhang of tape, you bring it up and over. Fill in with glue here. And one last time. Nice job. So now 
we have these two pieces of paper that are four and a half by eight and three eighths and these are going to cover the inside spine so some people do use score sheets on this too. I happen to have a little bit of score tape, of a score tape sheet, sheet left. So I'm just gonna split it half and half and then I'll fill in the rest with my other um, adhesive. So I wanna be fair, so I gotta measure this to see that I get half, it's about, so about three and a half. So you want this to lay down nice and flat and so it it's you, the more adhesive on these the better so i'm just going to put half of that one there i'm going to go around the perimeter also so i believe i have three eighths inch score tape that i'll use And we're also going to put some score tape on the actual book, the cover too. I'm not going to use really much wet glue on this part. It just works out better to use the score tape, I think. So there's one. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one while we're at it. The way to the edge so that it doesn't lift on your book. And then I'll fill in those spaces with one more strip. So I also like to place, let me move these to the side, I also like to place score tape on the chipboard and then right on the other side, so on the chipboard on the uh, long side and right next to the chipboard, just to make sure that it, and I'm also going to put a little bit in here too. I, you guys, it's worth it to put the extra time and energy and adhesive and all that kind of stuff into your cover. Last thing you want to do is go to all this work and then have it fall apart or not stay together nice and neat. I'm not going all the way to the top and the bottom because my paper that I'm going to lay down will cover to the very edge. So I'm just going to put two on the inside. Let's go ahead and take the backing off of the book first and then we'll go and put the take the backing off of the paper. Now when I take the backing off this, I do have a couple pieces that I can see are hanging over, so I just want to bring that 
up and over. And then you will do the other spine the exact same way we're doing this one. So you do want to make sure you line it up and look at the top and the bottom to make sure you have the same amount of space top and bottom. And I chose uh, four and a half because I think I had that left over. And so rather than waste paper. so. A lot of times you like it to cover these wings. Mine doesn't all the way cover it, but I didn't want to waste paper and it's not going to make a difference. This is bothering me, this little piece right here. Burnish it real well. Okay, so go ahead and do the other spine piece the same exact way. As we move forward on the tutorial, I had finished the book and made some changes, so I am just redoing the book for the tutorial. So I'm going to move to using a linen or a cream color uh, paper instead of the black. Um, I think it can be easier to follow. So what we're going to move on to is this top flap, and there is a gusset. And I also included some chipboard right here to make it more sturdy and durable so it doesn't collapse. So that's what we're going to uh, start with. And like I said, hopefully you'll be able to see okay with the linen color. The flap itself is 10 and 3 fourths by 9 and 5 eighths. And actually it might be closer, you know, if you do 16 I might have cut it 11 16 So um, we're going to be scoring on the 9 and 5 eighths inch side at 1 half and 1 and a fourth. So as we go through this tutorial, if you are making this, you will need a notebook and some paper to take down uh, the measurements. Um, the chipboard piece I made at 10 and 5 eighths by 5 eighths and I did put um, some paper or some adhesive on the back and then I cut a strip. We're going to wrap it and then it's uh, the wrap and cardstock is 11 and 5 eighths by 1 and 5 eighths and I ended up just making it 12 inches by 1 and 5 eighths instead of cutting it. It's not going to make that big a difference. So I'm going to start by uh, just wrapping my spine piece that's giving it some stability. And I'm just going to center it on my paper and eventually I'm going to put pattern paper on it but for right now let's just cover it with the plain cardstock and I'm just going to center it like I said it doesn't have to be perfect okay and then I'm going to wrap it like I normally wrap a cover but I'll be using glue instead of um, score tape. So I'm creasing the edges and I am going to take out the square corners. Uh, actually no, I like the angled better than the square so I'm going to go ahead and do the angle. So when we do an angle, we do need a little bit of hangover. We don't cut right to the chipboard. We do leave a little bit. Huh. It makes it like a point, doesn't it? It's narrow enough. And I'll angle this corner. And like I said, I am just going to use glue. I'm going to do the short pieces first. And I'm just going to put some glue up against that chipboard. And then on this piece right here. And I'll bring that up and over. Do that to both short ends. And then I will, I'll have to tuck in these little pieces at the end. Like 
flatten them out so it covers that corner. And I'll just put some score, or it's not score tape, some glue. Oops. Oopsie. I still want that crisp edge, so I'm going to flatten that on the side and glue on the other side. A little bit more generous with the glue, being as I'm not using any score tape on this part. move that off to the side and we are going to score our paper that measured 10 and five, uh, 3 fourths by 9 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to uh, put the 9 and 5 eighths up against the top. Like I said it could be closer to 11 sixteenths. So it's whatever works best for your book. So you might want to do a little bit of a measurement to see. And I'm going to score in two places. I'm going to score at one half. And my second score mark is one and a fourth. One half and one and a fourth. So let's burnish those. So you can see we have a 3 4 inch gusset and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this strip in that 3 4 inch gusset and that just makes it more sturdy so it doesn't get doesn't collapse. So I'm just going to use glue to adhere that and I'm going to be generous. Oopsie. I don't want it to come off. Darn it, I keep going on the messy with the glue. Okay, let's just center that. Make sure it doesn't go over any scoring. And I need to move it down. Flip it over and burnish it. Okay, so that is the top flap. And if we take a look at the book, on the top of the flap is just like a layout. And then underneath we have three tags so if you are going to put your tags on like mine you will need to cover one side of your flap just one side with pattern paper and then you're going to need three sets of magnets I use the small ones and these are graphic 45 tags and they had the words on them I'm not going to use the words on um, this one because it's going to be a winter theme so I'm going to look through my tags and get three of them and I think I have that off that cream color and I'll have to decide on what I want for the base so the side that we so with our 
um, gusset at the top, when you flip up, this is the side you want to cover with your pattern paper first, okay? Hold on though, make sure that you we put our magnets on. So um, let me get my paper ready and I'll show you. The tags that I have do have the word celebrate and I figure that'll work for Christmas. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use these. So what I had to do to get them to stay or get to um, have them flap is I cut four inch by um, three fourths inch strips because I can only have one half or excuse me one fourth inch glued to the back because I have those cutouts and I can't do a half or else it covers behind the C so if I if you have the plain tags I would just do a one inch by four inch square or rectangle and then score it at one half I still scored it at a half but I just have a one fourth inch piece to attach to the tag so again if you're using regular tags one inch by four inch score it a half so I'm going to go ahead and burnish this. You know what? I'm using a different paper and ugh, it doesn't. All right. And so I'm going to attach the one, my one fourth inch piece to the back of the tag. all the way to the end and I still might have to trim a little bit out of the C so you probably don't have to do that if you're just using a regular plain tag oh nope this one worked all right so that's how we'll attach it through the book now we do have to put down one magnet before we put down our pattern paper so I want this to stay closed. So once I have my pattern paper on and I line up my tag, I'm gonna want it to be about right here, okay? So I'm gonna place a magnet on the back of my tag and then I'll lay it down and get the reverse on the base paper. So I had one small magnet and two large, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a large one on this one. So I'm going to attach, both of my magnets are stuck together right now. I've got to get the backing off. There we go. So I'll just place that about right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and remove the back of my magnet so I just have one piece on and I know that I want my tag to fall about right here. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to put that back on. Sorry. I don't know why I took it off. So now I'm going to take off the backing of my magnet. And like I said, I'm going to eyeball where I want it to be. And then I'll press down. And I will put a piece of score tape over it just to keep it in place. Actually, this is, I have some old red line tape that I need to use, so I'll use that. If I can find the beginning. I haven't used red line tape in forever. Okay, and I'll go ahead and put some tape on my tag magnet just to keep it in place all right so at this point now 
we can go ahead and put our base paper on. So mine measured, and yours might be off a little bit, so you'll want to measure your own pattern paper and the back of the flap. So mine is a little about 10 and 5 eighths. Uh, a little a hair over 10 and a half uh, by 8 and a fourth. So let's take, I did ink the edges of my pattern paper. Put some glue on it. So the first book I did, I forgot to put that magnet on before I put um, the pattern paper on, so I had to improvise and I made it work, but there is a flaw if you look close enough. This is actually the Prima Collection Sugar Cookie. All right. Remember, we're just putting one side on because we're going to be cutting slits in this paper. And we don't want anything on the other side yet. So what's going to happen is I'm going to lay this tag down and I need, I'm going to draw a line with my pencil so that I know where to cut the slit and I'm just going to put it at the line back here that's four inches long and I'm going to pick that up I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to slit that four inch line so that I can stick the half inch piece behind the paper. And I'm going to stick the tag through there, make sure it's big enough. I might angle this. I'm going to miter these. have to go back and erase my pencil marks. I might need to cut a hair. Uh, where's my scissors? Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to come over here and glue that one half inch strip down. Okay, so now I'm going to place my top tag. And I am going to miter these. And I'm going to place that. This one goes all the way to the bottom, so I want this one all the way to the top. I do have a little bit of a border on the left hand side. Take your pencil and draw your four inch line on the edge of your tag. Use your ruler. and cut a slit. Let's 
see if that is long enough. Poke the half inch strip underneath. And looks like I'm gonna have to go a little bit more. I don't like to do it too much. better to do a little tiny, I'd rather do too little than too much to begin with. There we go. So I'm going to push that through. I still need a hair, just a smidge at the top. Ugh. I'm getting there. Okay, come on now. Cooperate. Yep, that was all I needed. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to glue it down. And then the last one is the center one so that we can make sure we have it in the spot that we want. I just eyeball it. And I think about right there looks good. So now I'm going to draw my line again. And then we still have to add two more magnets. If that went all the way through, it did. Now I'm going to miter these little tabs. I keep losing my scissors and they're right in front of me. All right, let's see if one cut did it. Super close. Let me just do a little bit down here and up here. Was so close. Perfect. And I'm gonna burnish this. Blow it down. I'm going to go back before I forget and erase my lines. So we want these top two to lay down flat also. So I'm going to add a smaller magnet here and a um, larger one here. I don't know. I have two magnets. Uh, I'll put the larger one here. I don't know what difference it makes, but so I'm going to make sure yeah, that should work. Um, actually, I got to give myself room for matting and I should be able to mat that. What about here? I'm going to go with that. So put down one side of your magnet. I'm not going to push too hard yet. Now take the backing off of the partner. Close the door. 
And I am going to put... Ooh, that's going to be close when it comes to matting. Yeek. That's going to be really close. And it's just because I have those words. If I didn't have the words, I wouldn't have to worry about it. But I will make it work. All right. And then I have the little one left. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Close it and just one small piece of tape to keep it down and not move. And then we'll go back later and you can decorate your tags. I still want to put a piece of pattern paper here also. And I'll put one on the top. This side is just going to be matted with plain paper and then put a like a scrapbook layout here. The next pieces you're going to need to cut, you're going to need 12 that measure four and a half by six. And we're going to score on the six inch side at a half. And then you're going to need two that are four and a half by eight. So that's the base of the waterfall. And then we're going to put six on each. So those are the sides when you open them up up the book there's a waterfall on each side okay so 12 at four and a half by six two at four and a half by eight the ones that measure four and a half by six you're going to place the six inch across the top and score at a half on all 12 of those you're going to want to burnish all of those half inch score marks And then you're going to apply those uh, six flaps to our base. So I've already done one. Looks like this. Okay. So the next one, I'm going to turn my scoreboard sideways. So I have a stopper on the top and at the bottom so that when I apply these, I have, I can bump them right up against and it'll line up nice and neat. Okay, so you're going to apply glue to the half inch piece. Okay, and bump it up to the very edge. Make sure it's lining up with the base. And press down. Then I open it up and I use my dry baby wipe make sure that it's adhered real well so then the next piece that we put on is going to bump up right against that half inch that's laying down so again apply the glue And bump it right up against that half inch piece and make sure that it's lining up with the sides also do that to all six pieces
So I look at the top and I look at the sides. Good. Okay, do that to all six. When you're ready to put the waterfall on your book, you're going to want to cover this with pattern paper first. You'll then put your seam binding, glue your seam binding on the back, and then you can place this centering it on that page. So first put down your pattern paper, adhere your seam binding or your closure to the back, and make sure it's long enough that you can bring it up and around and tie it, and then you'll place it on your side. You'll have one on each side on those five and a half inch strap uh, pages. You'll have one over here too. So here is, oh, I have, this is the left side. We have two flaps on the bottom, two on the top. I don't have any kind of closure because this keeps it down from, keeps it from flapping. And then when those open, you have a long pocket that opens to the left and there's like oh my God. there is like a large envelope on that side okay and the one that opens it's hard getting all this in the camera the one that opens to the right has a flap up and when it comes down and then it opens to the left <laughs> it's hard to see and then there's a an angled pocket here and then on the back there is an angled pocket kind of looks like a water slide there's a little pocket on here and then there's place for our mats. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on next. You know what? I wonder. Yep, yeah, that's right. Okay. I have to redo those flaps. Um, I hopefully can edit out what I just did. Um, but I forgot I changed the book. And so I need to have you cut the flaps a little bit differently. So You'll need one at 12 by 8 and 3 eighths and one that's 11 and 3 fourths by 8 and 3 eighths. I forgot that I had to make them longer for a gusset. So um, hopefully my daughter can help me edit this video. Okay. Take the 12 inch piece and put it across the top of your scoreboard. And you're going to have two score marks. One at one half. So there's a half inch. And then go to one and a fourth. And score again so half and one and a fourth you're gonna do the same thing to the 11 and 3 fourths piece place your 11 and 3 fourths inches across the top score at one half and at one and a fourth okay so there's that paper to help you when I put that line with the two measurements that's where I scored so I put the 12 inches across the top scored at half and one and a fourth put the 11 and 3 fourths inch piece across the top scored at half and one and a fourth so I apologize if you cut your paper like I did the first time. Then we're going to burnish. The two score lines. On each of the pieces. So we'll attach it to the book with the half inch and then we need to gusset so that the um, bulk of the book pages underneath don't get in the way. And again, burnish the other one.
Okay. Now we'll build on top. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, let's keep moving on. Time for the left hand flap. So this is going to be the flap that's uh, adhered on the left hand side that will open to the left. And there are, this is the front. You are going to want uh, four pieces that measure four and one eighth by five and three fourths, fourths, and then one that is 11 and a half by three and a half. So these uh, four are the flaps that open, and then there's a longer pocket uh, in the back. So again, when you see that I have the uh, half underneath five and three fourths, that means I'm going to put the five and three fourths inch side on the top of my scoreboard, and I'm going to score at one half. Okay. So then down here on the pocket, it shows that 11 and a half inches across the top. I'm going to score at one half on each end, and then on the three and a half side at one half. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with that long pocket, and I'm going to start with the half inch on the three and a half inch side. Got to get my scoring tool. Oh, can't get it. Okay, so you can either score at half or at three. I think I'm going to score at three just because sometimes it's a little bit easier. And then with your 11 and a half inches across the top, let's go ahead and score at one half on each end. So when we do our pockets, we take out the square on the corner. I'm going to angle that off square in the corner. I'm going to angle it and I am going to miter the top on that half inch section. Okay, so there's our pocket. Now we just have to do a score, one score on each of the four pieces that measured four and one eighth by five and three fourths. So the long side up at the top and all we're doing is scoring at one half on all four of those pieces. easy enough. Now remember we don't need a closure for this because we're going to have a flap that comes over the top and that's going to keep them closed. So let's go ahead and burnish all of our score marks. On all of those. Now you can miter the ends on that half inch strip. I think I will once I get them burnished here. And then the pocket also burnish that. Ugh, this paper. on this one and I am so spoiled with artisan. I notice a huge difference. Okay, so go ahead and get your left hand side and if you want you can tuck all of the gussets behind so that you just see the front. And like I said if you want you can miter the corners. like so. So just take a little angle off on each. And you're going to want to do a dry fit first just to make sure you don't have to do any trimming. Now we do want to make sure that there's no overlap on the doors so that they hit one another. We might have to do some adjusting. I think I had them cut so that there's a little bit of space in between. Yep, just a real fine, there's just a real tiny 
space there and that's what we want and now we also want to space down this center so that they don't overlap so again if you have to do any trimming yep there's just the right amount of space that worked out fabulously okay so we are going to adhere these down first you are going to want to go right up to the fold because I have my gusset folded behind and I'm going to place this one at the very top and end. Every time I take my pin out my glue is clogged and I just washed the tip. Come on there must be a piece in there. There we go. All right. And I have mine turned sideways just because it's easier for me to work uh, like that. And then let's go ahead and open that door and just make sure there's no glue coming out. Okay, the one below it go all the way to the bottom here. And like I said, there should be that tiny space in between. sure everything lines up nice and neat no overlaps perfect I'll go ahead and turn it the other direction and do the other two the same exact way to adjust that. Last one and then we're going to open up those doors and place the long pocket. We have to do the doors first before we do the pocket. So now let's open those doors and just like we did a dry fit for that we're going to want to make sure that this fits nicely in between the two with not going over the score lines and mine looks like it's going to work so I'll put glue on those three sides scoring issue I like to make sure I get glue pretty close to the edge so that there's no lifting poke in those sides I do the bottom first then I look at the two sides to make sure it's not going over any score lines and that it's centered and then I press down and voila and that is the front So then when we turn it over, this is where I had the large envelope, okay? So the pieces that you're going to need for that measure, uh, two of them at 10 and a half by five and two of them that are five and three fourths by eight and a fourth. And we're gonna end up uh, scoring on the five inch side and on the five and three fourths inch side. So let's go ahead and get our scoreboard ready. Get rid of my scraps here. Move this out of the way. 
All right, so let's find the two pieces that are 10 and a half by five, okay? And you're gonna place the five inches across the top and score it a half. And you're gonna do that on both pieces, okay? Five and a half, I'm sorry, five on the top, score it a half. On the other two pieces that were five and three fourths by eight and a fourth, you're gonna place the five and three fourths inches across the top, score it one half. Then we're gonna burnish those score marks and we're gonna to have to do some cutting to make it look like a large envelope. So let's score. Oh, let's burnish these. Okay, so we're gonna have, again, a dry fit to make sure it's right, and it is. And then these two. So we're gonna do the side pieces first. And what I did is I kept the half inch behind. Okay, so my half inch is tucked under. Let me move this down in here so you can see. Oh, wrong way. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Um, so I took a ruler and with my half inch tucked under, I made a tick mark at the one inch. I measured one inch up from the bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna do it on both sides. My half inch is down here at the bottom towards me. Now this paper measures eight and a fourth. So we want to go to four and one eighth and put a tick mark. That's your center. So I'm going to cut from that four and one eighth to that one inch mark. I'm just gonna draw a little line just so I can, I did it real light. So that will help me when I put it in my cutting, in the channel of my cutting uh, cutter. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. We're gonna cut on those. Do that to both of your pieces. One inch up from the bottom. Well, when I say bottom, I'm talking about with the half inch facing me. There's an inch. There's an inch, and then it was four and one eighth. I'm just gonna draw a quick line. Oops. So I know where to cut. Okay, on the long pieces, again, I'm gonna measure one inch up and do the same thing, but obviously our middle mark is gonna be different on the top. So this measures what did I say it measured? Ten and a half. So we need to go to five and a fourth and put a tick mark. Connect those two just so you know where to cut. I need a longer ruler. This little thing's not cutting it.
One more. One more time. One inch up, and then five and a fourth was our middle mark. Then we connected those so we know where to cut off that triangular piece. Okay, so now get your trimmer. And place that line in your cutting channel. And just slice that puppy right off. Same with the other side. So that's what we end up with. Now you can round this if you want to. I'm going to leave it straight. I might round the other one. I don't know. I think I rounded the side ones on my original one. Oopsie. ones are done, now the short ones. Right now, I do have a couple pencil marks that I want to get rid of because it might not be covered with paper. So I'm just going to make sure that those don't show up. Alright, so I did a magnetic closure on this one, but I did the magnetic closure using a cut apart. When you um, mat this, you're going to want to cut 1 8 inch smaller. So this is 10 and a half. So you're going to cut your pattern paper, your designer paper, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> at 10 and 3 8. And then this was 4, it's 4 and a half. So you're going to want to cut it by 4 and 3 8. Okay. And that's how you will, and then you'll uh, measure and cut just like we did with the base page. As you're putting together your large envelope, this is the bottom piece. Don't put this uh, paper on yet because we need to put a magnet underneath. But you can, um, this is the top flap and you can cover both the inside and the outside. These flaps, you don't need to do anything on the inside because they're going to be glued closed and you won't see them. Okay, so what we're going to do um, is for my closure, I found a cut apart and I'm going to mount it on some paper. So I'm going to need a magnet to go underneath the cut apart like so, and then I'll attach it to that bottom piece. So I'm going to kind of do some eyeballing. And I think it's going to go about right there. Mm, yeah, I think 
think that's what I want. Actually, I'll put it on this piece first. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, um, so go ahead and take the backing off of one side of your magnet if this is the type of closure you're going to use. Sometimes I have a hard time getting this backing off. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead, before I attach the other magnet, I'm going to go ahead and glue some things down to make sure I get it in the right spot. Okay, so I'm going to open up my gusset there, and I'm going to place the two side pieces down. Or do I want to do the top? I guess it doesn't matter. I can do the top then the sides. Yeah, I'll do the sides first. Um, I am going to go ahead and do a slight miter just so that I don't see anything coming out the end if I don't line it up exactly right. Oh my gosh, this glue is driving me insane. Okay, I am going to turn this sideways just so it's easier for me to line everything up. that I'm gonna turn it the other way and do the other side again don't cover that gusset I'm gonna miter those corners burnish and now let's put the top piece on make sure I have this going in the right direction so open those flaps and we're going to place I'm going to turn it upside down just because it's easier for me when I glue it on I'm going to taper these two I just said I was going to turn it upside down, did I? Ah. So attach it. It's going to go up here, so I'm going to turn it around. Okay, just wanted to double check before I put it on wrong. And go all the way to the top. point you need to decide let me show you what it's going to look like you're going to see this so you're probably going to want to put a piece of paper right here 
So now would be a good time to do that before you close off your book or your envelope. So I'm going to see if I have a scrap piece of paper that's going to be big enough. Let me try this. So 10 and 3 eighths. And this will be glued. Oh, so close. Hmm. That is really close, but I can see some white and that's going to bother me. Let's go to plan B. I have another piece, I guess. I can just cut it. Yeah, so I'm going to measure. It should be about, let me make it five inches. going to do it. Now, do I want this side or do I want this side? I kind of like both. I think I'll do this side just because it matches that top. So I am going to put some ink on here before I glue it down. don't need to put any ink on the bottom because you won't see that. And let's glue it down. Four marks. On the last one I did, I forgot to do this, and so it was kind of a pain to mat it after I had closed up the envelope. Okay, so now oh. now you have to decide: do you want? these on the inside and this on the outside. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to taper my edges. Ooh. And I'm going to do a dry fit to make sure it fits in between these two. And it does. Okay. So I'm going to take off this top magnet. I am going to put just a little piece of tape on top of my magnet so it doesn't move. I don't know if you really need to do that, but I always have. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern paper on. Okay. 
me burnish that and fast forward this if this part's you already know what you're doing. Okay, let's glue this down. We still have to put the um, magnet on the back of our cut apart. Again, I want to make sure I center it between these two pieces. Okay. So now I'm just going to put glue here and here so that this stays closed. Almost done with the envelope. Got the excess glue off. So now I want to put the matching Now I don't want it so that I can see it, so I'm going to place it on top here like that. All right. I'm going to need some score tape to keep it down. Let me take this off real quick. Put some score tape on the back of my magnet. I don't want to see that mag I don't like it when I can see the magnet if it's not covered. And I've had to do it before because I've made a mistake, but usually you can find a way to cover it. It's just I don't I'd rather do it right the first time. Okay. So I'm gonna center that. It's going to go right there and take the backing off of this. And place your cut apart on top and then our envelope is done. I feel like that took a long time. push down real good so it wraps around that magnet and doesn't lift. Okay, so the next thing, now that that's on, is I'm going to put some glue on the top part so it stays down. So you don't need a whole lot. Oop, there we go. All right, there we go. So that would be a good place to store a lot of pictures inside this envelope. There we go, voila! Okay, 
So the only thing is to go back and put your pattern paper on. Page, the first flap is done. Now we need to work on the second flap. And let me give you the measurements for those papers that you're going to need. You're going to need one that measures 11 and 3 fourths by 4 and a half. You're going to need one that's four and three fourths by eight and three fourths. You're going to need one that's six and three fourths by eight and a fourth. Two that are six and a fourth by six. And then the last of the papers you need to cut, you need one that's four and a half by two and a half. And one that's 11 and a fourth by six. Okay, that's the last of the paper that you're going to have to cut for our book. So now it'll just be a matter of scoring and placing. So I'm going to have you take your four and a half by two and a half, and this is going to be a pocket, but we're going to glue, we're just going to um, score the two sides. We're not going to leave, we're just going to put glue on the bottom instead of giving it a half inch flap. So place your four and a half inches across the top, score at one half and at four. Okay. The 11 and a fourth by six and a half on the 11 and a fourth inch side, you're going to score at one half. Turn it around so that the 11 and one fourth is still at the top, score at one half. And then you're going to take the six inch side at the top and score it a half. The piece that was 11 and three fourths by four and a half, we're going to score at on the 11 and three fourths inch side at one half on each end. And then on the four and a half inch side, score it one half. This is the long pocket in the back center of the book. The last of the scoring then. Okay, this is your four and three fourths by eight and three fourths piece. On the four and a three-fourths inch side, score at four and one-fourth. Turn it to the side here so that the eight and three-fourths inches is across the top and score at a half. So this is going to be our L pocket and it goes on the right hand side. So we're going to have the half inch on the right and at the bottom. Oh shoot, I forgot to tell you one piece, sorry. I forgot to tell you this one. Seven and one eighth by three and a half. Sorry, seven and an eighth by three and a half. With the seven and an eighth inch at the top, score it one half. Turn it one time, score it a half on the short side. And one more time so the seven and an eighth is back on top, score it a half. You have two pieces that were uh, six and a fourth by six. Place the six inches across the top, score it a half on both of them. Six inches, score it a half. And the last one to score is the one that measures six and three fourths by eight and a fourth. Put the six and three fourths across the top, score at one half. Okay, so I'm going to move these to the side. I'm going to show you in the book what these pieces all, what they look like. So let's refresh our memories. Oh, that's not true. You do still have to cut, you guys, I'm sorry. You still have to cut the front pockets for the book, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So this is the right hand page. So here are the two flaps. 
there's a top and a bottom and then when you open those this one opens to the left and there's a pocket on this one and then here's our L pocket now we open the L pocket and I just used regular paper for this one I didn't actually cut out the cardstock this can be it's open all the way so that you can tuck things underneath this L pocket and carry it over here if it's large Okay, so that's that. Let me. I still have to put some ribbon on this paper clip. So then we also cut the piece for this. We also cut the piece for this pocket, and then this little pocket down here. And we also cut that long pocket for the center. Gosh, I'm running out of room. This magic pocket. Okay, that's what we're working on now. So you have a visual as to where we're going. So then the only other thing after those are these two front pockets that hold the notebooks. Okay, so let's get started. I went ahead and burnished all of my score lines. Um, this is the six and three fourths by eight and a fourth where we uh, scored on the one half inch on the left. Um, we want our base page so that the scoring is on the right hand side. I am going to turn my paper though so it's at the top because it's easier for me to glue. And I'm going to place this, um, put glue on the one half inch strip and put it at the very edge of the paper. Glue would cooperate and not get clogged. And it is a little bit shorter than the page. I did that on purpose, so I'm going to center it so that there's about a sixteenth of an inch on each side. Uh, burnishing tool, where do you go? Right here. Okay, so let's open that up and the pocket that goes on top is the seven and an eighth by three and a half inch piece. I went ahead and burnished but I need to cut out those corner pieces where the squares are, where the two uh, lines intersected. I'm going to go ahead and miter the top. Way. Do a dry fit to make sure that it fits. And you want to put it more on the left so that it doesn't get in the way of closing. So let's put glue on that. So there's our inside pocket. Now we need to place the flaps down. Now this is going to be on the inside. The flaps will be, these flaps that are at the top and the bottom will be on the outside. So we're going to place, I am going to miter these corners too. I don't know why I've been forgetting to do that. I usually do it right when I burnish. Okay, so let's go ahead and we want to make sure that it lines up well so that when we close everything up we don't see any paper sticking out. So I'm going to close this real quick and I want to make sure that there's no paper that sticks out. and. I think I need to scoot it over just a hair. Okay. I'm going to 
turn it upside down, put the other flap on the top. After mitering the half inch there. And I'm going to close everything up before I push down too hard so that I can see that everything has lined up correctly. So that's really loose. That'll work. So now I can press down. All right, so this goes on the inside and these go to the top. L pocket piece is the four and three fourths by eight and three fourths inch piece and we had done a half inch score on the bottom and on the right hand side and so it kind of depends on how you like your pocket um, as to how you mark it but I like it um, if this half inch is tucked under I like to go over um, about two inches and put a tick mark And then decide how far up you want to go and I'm gonna go down I don't know um, let's see uh, one two I'll go down to the five inch and put a tick mark and I'll cut from is that gonna be enough I think I'll go to two and a half at the top Oops. So I'm going to go to two and a half. Okay, so then you'll just cut that at an angle. You will need to cut the square out on the bottom by cutting off at an angle. And if you want, you can taper the top, taper down here. Okay, and then just put it in your cutter and cut that triangle off. Go ahead and put glue on your half inch pieces. And we're going to glue it on the right hand side. Up against the score but not over. Line it up at the bottom. it on. Now when I, oopsie, put some glue there. So when I put my pattern paper on, I did put a little pocket here, but I just put, um, it was because my paper was too short. Um, at the top. So I just put a pocket that lined up with this and I just tucked it underneath here a little and I didn't seal it on the right hand side. So you can either do that or just leave it the way it is if you have the right size paper. So that's that side. Now on the other side you're going to need your 11 and a fourth by six piece and your four and a half by two and a half piece. So this one is a little bit different. So we scored um, a half inch on each end and at the bottom. And this pocket kind of reminds me of it like a ski slope. So what I did is with these half inch pieces tucked underneath, I'm going to do some measuring again. And I'm going to go over to the two and a half inch and put a mark. I'm going to come up two and a half inches. So if this is six inches, one, two, three and a half right here. And uh, what else did I do? Let's see. 
I what did I do? Two and a half. Oh, I did. I went over three and a half. So then, from here, the two and a half, one, two, three, go to five and a half. Okay. And what I did was very lightly, and there might be an easier way to do this, people, but I don't know. I just drew a very light line until I got to that two and a half inch mark. Okay. And then I angled that in and right. Hold on. Okay, I made that harder than it needed to be. I'm sorry. Put a two and a half inch tick mark here. Go up two and a half inches and then over three and a half and put a tick mark there. And then we're going to cut from the two and a half to this mark and then cut this over. Now I just used my scissors. I did not use um, where's my scissors? the cutter. I thought it was just easier being as I had a straight line with my ruler. And you could put the cut put it in the cutter for this part once you've cut over. It's up to you. Sorry, that wasn't very clear. I should have been better prepared. There we go. Now this is going to fit right here on the end. And you might have to adjust it just a hair. Mine's a hair too long. And we have the half inch marks on each side, but we left the bottom unscored. We're just going to put a bead of glue. Okay, and we'll glue that on right there. Now, I'm going to cover it with pattern paper first before I glue this one down. Okay, and I still need to trim a little bit off the top. I must measure different. There we go. That's right. All right, so I'll glue that down after I pattern it. And then that is going to be placed here. And you will glue, so just like a regular pocket, take out those corners. I'm going to angle here. So I want this to be closed. Take out the corner here taper at the top. And then we will glue that down right to the end here. So there's a little bit of space, so I would put pattern paper down first before I put this down. Okay? Like so. Can you see that? All right. The last thing before we attach it to the book um, is let me explain the back pocket. So um, this pocket is going to go, this was the 11 and 3 fourths by four and a half. We had scored on three sides. We're going to taper, miter, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And we want to do a dry fit to make sure it goes in between these two. And it does. And I would place this down and then put your pattern paper underneath so you don't have to use a full sheet and that will conserve it. Okay. Now, before you put this down, however, we need to attach the pages. So you're going to glue the top piece on. This was the one with the tags. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. We'll put this one down first. Then you'll put the two side pieces on. You'll glue one over here. And you'll glue the other one over here. And then you can glue that pocket in on top. But you have to put the uh, pages on the side flaps and the top flap first. It is much easier to um, put your book together after you have done all your pattern paper rather than to put it together and then do your decorating. So I went ahead and did all of my um, putting my paper down. So now before we can do anything with this back we have to apply the side panels because if you don't you'll have these little half inch gussets showing and we don't want that. So this is the one that's going to open on over to the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and place my adhesive on that half inch strip and it's okay to be generous with the glue on this I don't want it going anywhere okay and I'm gonna line it up making sure I don't go over the fold and I want to make sure it is straight at the bottom and that this can still go over and I think I'm happy with that so I'll open it up and burnish it okay We're going to do the same thing to the other side. On the half inch, again, you want to put your pattern paper on first, and then we'll lay it down over here. Make sure that it's straight and that this can still go over. So let's get the glue. it doesn't go over. Now I'm going to put this one down and make sure that this lines up okay. And it seems to. So now I can press down. there will be pattern paper on top of this so that will help it stay secure also okay nice oh, I think I have autofocus on let me get that off okay all right so now it's time to put the pattern paper um, on here. We have a back pocket to put on. And I'm going to make sure that it will fit between these two, and it does. So I'm going to save paper and not put um, pattern paper on this whole thing. I'll lay my pocket down first, and then I'll just put a section that goes down a little bit so that I don't have to cover the whole thing. So we've already made this pocket, we've already done the corners, it's just a matter of gluing it down. You can put your pattern paper on first if you want, um, and then, like I said, put your pattern paper on back here, and then that's all with the construction of the main inside of the book, and then the only thing we have left are the two outside pockets um, that will go on the outside of our book. Now this book I'm just doing with a ribbon closure that can come off. So my book um, will have two pockets on the front to hold the booklets 
and I'm just going to wrap a ribbon around and tie it so it's not going to be adhered to my book. Okay, there's the back of my book and then the side is real sparkly. Uh, so the pockets, let me refresh your memory. Ugh. The pockets look like this, they're three dimensional and they hold two books. I put together one book and I'll do one with you. Um, these, my books measure five inches across. Now I know that Graphic 45 sells the books that go inside the traveler's notebooks and I'm pretty sure Tammy has some in her store, but those are narrower than this. So our pockets will fit a five inch and so you'll have plenty of room if you go with the Graphic 45 ones. Um, the only thing I'm really going to show you on this, all I did was cover it with the pattern paper, but I did make a shaker and I'll go through how I did the shaker on this one. And then those will go right here on the front pockets. Okay, so let me go ahead and prep my, um, I'll finish adhering that pocket on the back and then we'll go ahead and do the pockets on the front. Before I put down my paper, I decided I am going to put the um, closure underneath. Um, so I have to put that down before I lay down my front cover papers. So um, I cut out two of these, they're about 20 inches each. And I know that my pocket on the front is going to come to about here. So yeah, I'm just going to put it in the, at the halfway mark. I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to eyeball. And I'm just going to adhere it with some glue. And I'm going to give it a little bit of space here because the last time I made the book, I adhered it to the back and brought it over. This I'm just adhering to this side right here. So I'm going to give it a little bit of extra ribbon and lee, you know, some, just so it doesn't pull out. I don't think it would, but. All right, and. And I'll go ahead and glue my paper down on top of it. There's different types of closures you can choose from. Um, I really like just ribbon ties. Um, and this ribbon from the store is super easy to tie and it looks nice. It comes in different colors too. This happens to be the pink and the white, but there's uh, cream color, there's a white, there's a black, there might be a navy. All right. So our front door here is five and a half by eight and a half. So I cut my paper an eighth of an inch shorter on both sides. So if it's five and a half across, I did five and three eighths. And when it's eight and a half tall, I do eight and three eighths for the height. Okay. And I'll be sure to show pictures of the Disney one at the end because I know some people like to know what papers were used on what page. And being this tutorial is with different paper, that might be helpful to have a w another walkthrough at the end. All right, so now it might be a little bit easier to put on the opposite side. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. Okay, so I'll put the glue here. And then I'll glue down that paper and then we'll do the pockets. And the pockets are what kind of make it come to life, I think. 
kind of unique. Uh, and then of course the shaker on the notebook. I love a good shaker. And there's so many different pretty, there's a lot of pretty uh, mixes and the one I'm using is from the store. I don't know if they have any left of this winter one, but the Disney one was also from the store. So All right, and let's burnish that. And we'll set this off to the side so it can dry. So now the two pockets on the front, those are dimensional. So let me give you the measurements for that. You're going to need two pieces that are seven and seven eighths by six and a fourth. And we're going to be scoring at one half and one and one fourth on three sides. And then when we're done with the cutting, it will look like this. Now I show that you can cut either way for your tabs, whether you leave the tabs on the left hand side or if you go straight up, either way it's going to work. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that as long as you have a tab, you're going to be fine. It doesn't matter which direction it's going. So let me show you how to score this. Go ahead and place the 7 and 7 eighths inch side across the top. And I'm going to have you score at 1 half and 1 and 1 fourth. Turn it one time so that the six and a fourth inches is across the top. Do the same scoring. Score at one half, one and one fourth. Turn it one more time so that the seven and seven eighths is back at the top and score at one half and one and one fourth. Okay, so let me show you how to cut that. And I haven't done any of the burnishing yet. Basically what you're going to do is take out the three sections at the bottom on each side. So what we're going to end up doing is cutting out those three rectangles. Okay. So I'm going to cut straight on the score. And then I'll cut off those three completely. Okay, so it looks like that. Now I'm going to cut up on this score to the next score line and I'm going to taper those in a little bit. Take a little triangle out on each side of that tab like so. Let's do it again. Take out the three cor uh, corner pieces. So go straight up on the score line. Take out those, one's a square it looks like, but the other two are rectangles. Okay, now cut straight up on the score and then tapered by taking out a little triangle on each side. Like so. On the half inch section, uh, miter it or taper it just on the half inch on both sides. Now this is something you're going to want to put pattern paper on before you adhere it to your book otherwise it's going to be too hard. So go ahead and burnish your score marks. I will never use paper other than artisan again. This, I just, I'm so spoiled. I can't, it's hard to, when you're burnishing this paper, it doesn't go, it gets off is what I'm trying to say.
Now, before we put this together, we're going to put our paper on also. But what's going to happen is this half inch will be attached to the book. So you'll have the corners will meet and that tab will go in the inside to help keep the book together. And we'll glue it so that these sides come together at the corner. We'll tuck that tab on the inside, fold over the half inch pieces, and then we'll glue the half inch piece down onto our book, and then we'll slide our book down inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern paper on. The pocket measures, uh, looks like about five and three eighths, so I'll go five and a fourth across and four and seven eighths tall. And then these are three fourths inch gussets. So I'll go six, uh, five eighths across. Okay, so let me get my pattern paper on and then I'll show you how to attach it to your book and then we'll make the shaker. Time to adhere the box together after you have your pattern paper on. So you're going to tuck the tabs underneath to connect the two corners. So I'll do one corner at a time and I'll probably use a clothespin to help it stay closed and dry. So I'll just tuck that under, make sure that it lines up real well. Kind of hold it for a second. And get a little clothespin. And let's do the same thing to the other side. Put glue on the tab. Make sure the two pieces line up real well at the corner. And I'm going to use a closed pin to hold it for a second. All right, so we're going to give it a second to dry. We are going to adhere it to the book next. Now, you could adhere this first and then slide the paper down inside because you can see my um, half inch tabs, but most of the time the book will be in there, so that doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, you can put the box on first. Slide the background paper down in there. Okay, so I'm going to give this a second more to dry. Now when we put this on the book, we just want to make sure that we adjust the box well enough that it's going from um, corner to corner and the edges are lined up because sometimes it will kind of get off a little bit if you're not careful. So now we're going to glue, put glue on our half inch strips. And I would like to make sure I get it right at the very edge so that it lays down nice. And I'm going to tuck some underneath here where the two pieces meet. And the last one. Okay, so I'm going to turn this a little bit. I'm going to start at the bottom and make sure it's lined up. And then I'm going to make sure that the sides, sometimes you know, I need to push this one in a hair. And this one needs to go in a hair. So once you're happy with how it looks, I'm going to use this tool just to go down inside and push those down real well. I don't want 
that box coming off. And we'll give it a second to dry. Okay. So remember, our book kind of falls in a little bit right now, but that's just because we haven't put anything inside yet. So then our boxes line up real well. The tie closure will go to the top of the box. Boxes. And I'll tie a bow in the center. And I'll probably have to trim mine. Yeah, okay. Yep, I definitely have to trim that. Okay, so now it is time to do the, um, and also the books will help keep this up too. Uh, now it's time to do the shaker on top of our book. So this one I do a little, did a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, so I have my book covered and I just put pattern paper on the inside. I didn't do anything fancy. And my frame, because this is a five inch book, measures four and one fourth by five and one fourth. My border is about seven eighths of an inch wide. So what you can do is you can take a piece, this is the lightweight chipboard, and you can measure seven eighths and draw lines after you cut it and then go and use an X-Acto knife. Or you can cut out a square the size that you want it lay it on top of your chipboard, draw around the box, and then get your X-Acto knife. There's more than one way you can do that. So it's up to you, it's whatever's easiest. So when I say, um, let me get a piece of paper for you. So let's say this was my chipboard I could take a square that's cut to the size that I want and place it on top. And I'm just using this as an example. And then I could just draw around the outside of the square and then take my X-Acto knife and cut it. Or I can measure, let's say I want an inch, I'll do a tick mark at one inch, tick mark at one inch. And then we'll draw lines on all four sides, like so. And then you would do another inch. whatever it is that you want your measurement to be. It doesn't have to be seven eighths. It could be an inch, whatever you want. And then you'd have one more. I think it's easier just to cut out the square and then lay the square on top of the paper or the chipboard. And then you would take your X-Acto knife and cut this middle part out, okay? So I have already cut the center out and uh, the paper I'm using to cover is this and what I'm going to do is I'm uh, this measures now remember this is four and a fourth by five and a fourth this measures uh, about five and three fourths by six and a half and all I'm going to do is glue the frame onto the back of the paper okay that's how I'm going to start so just glue that on I'm using the art glitter glue for this And we'll have to let it sit for a second just to make sure it's real dry. And I'm just eyeballing it. 
You probably could use regular chipboard if you don't use the thin. Probably doesn't make a difference. Give that a second. Now I am going to miter my corners. I'm going to use this tool. If you are, don't have this tool, you can just um, cut an angle, but just make sure you don't go right up to the chipboard. Leave yourself a little bit of space so that you can cover the corner and it doesn't have that chipboard showing through. So if I were my knife, where would I be? Hmm, where is it? Oh, there it is. And so we're taking, it's just like covering the cover of an album. So you can see that it doesn't go all the way to the corner. There's a little bit of space there. So once you feel like that frame is on there and it's the glue has dried, we are going to cut a slit from corner to corner. So I'm going to take my knife and just draw, uh, cut on the diagonal so that I go to the other corner. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine definitely is not. So that is our opening in the center. Now it's too long to wrap around, so we are going to trim those to about a uh, half inch. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut off that triangle at the end. So I have a one, about a one half inch. How to get my scissors in there? Okay, like so. I left about a one half inch. And we're gonna do that to all four sides. Does not have to be perfect. There's two. And the last one. All right, so now we have our one uh, half inch border on the inside of that frame. So now we're going to bring it up and over our chipboard and crease it. are going to glue that down. Okay, so it looks like so. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue I'm going to get glue all over my hand. Do that to all four sides. Glue all four down. Ouch! Once you have the inside glued, you want to do the outside. So again, it's just like an album cover. I'm going to just use glue. I'm not going to use score tape. I'll do the two long sides first. If you cut too much, your paper too big, you might need to trim this because you don't want that paper to go over into the center so you can see it. So just make sure that you double check. You might need to trim. I'll do the opposite long side. Now because I miter mine at an angle, I will have to tuck in those corners. I'll show you that in a second. 
Now I did train my paper just like a uh, cover. I stood it up and gave it a natural fold and then I went and used my burnishing tool to kind of crease it so it would hold that shape. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now on this one, my corners, I need to tuck those corners, push in. Okay. Burnish that down. Now we are going to need a piece of cellophane, is that the right word? Um, a plastic piece for the center so we can make a window. I happen to have some old overhead transparencies from school and that's what I use, but you can buy it at the store. And I just cut a piece that I have to make sure that has a border so I can use my score tape around the outside edge. So you don't want it exactly the size of the square, you want it a little bit larger. So I'm going to place, oopsie, I'm going to put one fourth inch score tape around the perimeter of that inside square so that the cellophane, will, is that the right word? It doesn't sound right for some reason. Acetate, that's what I'm looking for. That's the word. A little mental block there. Alrighty. Burnish that tape down before you take off the backing. four sides off at the same time, at least I do. I know that my acetate is the right size so I don't need to do a dry fit, I already did. And I know that I left the right amount of border so I can take off this tape. Now when I put, oopsie, when I uh, lay down the acetate I want to make sure it's as flat and as tight as possible. And I do have that protective tissue on it just so I don't get a bunch of fingerprints on it. Okay, and I'm just going to lay that down and burnish. So now we have our window. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, so I am also going to ink my edges because I've been inking everything else. So I'm just going to go around. I probably should have done the inside of the, I should have, I should have done the inside here. I'm going to have to be very careful. Just to give it a little touch. So it looks like I did it right. Okay, that'll do the trick. All right, so the top of our frame is done. Um, we are going to end up putting, I'm going to put two layers. Now <laughs> I have this huge, look at this. I have this huge roll of craft foam that you can get at the store. It's 108 feet. Look at that. Holy moly. So I have plenty of that and I'm going to do uh, two thick so that I have enough room for my shaker pieces to roll around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at my book. 
So being as I've already done one notebook, I want to make sure that I line up my cut apart about where I have the other one because I want my frames to line up like so. So that's where I'm going to put my cut apart. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue down and just lay it right on top of the actual notebook. And this is a little bit different than how I normally do it. When it's a separate piece, like this is attached to the book, if it's a separate shaker, I do it a little bit different, but this will do the trick for the book. Okay. All right, so now we need to put our foam on the back of our frame. You want to make sure that your foam goes around the outside with no gaps and no spaces so that no sequins or shaker pieces can come out. So we want to make sure that the foam goes bumps right up against the next piece. No empty spaces on the corner. All right, I did two layers of the foam tape. And so now I want to adhere it to my book like so. But the shaker pieces, normally I would put the shaker pieces on this part and then put the back on it, but I want to see the cut apart, make sure it's in the right spot. So I'm going to sprinkle my shaker pieces on the actual book and make sure that they stay in the center. I'm going to flatten them out. So, keeping them in the center. I have just a few left. I'm going to try and use them all up. Okay. I do want it flat. That is going to be perfect. All right, so now we're going to take the backing off of the frame and put some, I put adhesive on it, um, some glue too, just to make sure it sticks real well. If you have really thick foam tape, you may not need to, uh, a, too deep, but I had to because it's kind of thin. And these shaker pieces are a little bit thicker. Okay, so I'm just going to run a bead of glue. Okay, and Perfect. Push that down. And then I have a chipboard piece I'm going to put up here in the corner. I have a little bow that I'm going to put down here, like so. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'll probably put a piece of ephemera down here. And I have some of the enamel dots. And then we'll put them in our book and we'll do a last walkthrough and I will do a last walkthrough of the Mickey Mouse, uh, the Disney paper, because that's the one um, that is that I'm featuring from the store. Okay, here's the final walkthrough of the book that I just made with you as um, with the sugar cookie from Prima. We have the waterfalls on each side. I ended up doing the tags on the front here. I have the layout right here. I have the four doors. I did put some um, appliques here. These open. I have some more cut aparts. Okay. Then this opens to the left. 
We have the large envelope pocket. Here's our two flaps. This one opens. This pocket I put a couple cut-aparts in. Then this one opens. And we have our back pocket. So that's the one I did with you. Let's go through the uh, Disney one so that you can, if you want to see which papers I used on each page. So on this one I did do these flaps that I didn't do on the other one. These, remember the chipboard pieces were from my own collection. These both had the shakers. On the inside I did the layout on the front on this one waterfall on each side. Then I have the three tags on the top of this one. The four doors. Okay. Then it opens. Large envelope. Here's the two flaps. running out of room and then this opens and there's a pocket little pocket cut apart angled pockets and the I'm like a ski slope pocket <laughs> cut um, a mat a little tag pocket with some mats in it. So please let me know if you have any questions. Um, the matting, I always have you do that on your own. I just kind of go through the construction of the book. And then this is the tie closure to keep it stands up real good. And there's plenty of room inside to build, put maybe some inserts, pictures, Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Um, these supplies can be purchased at Country Craft Creations at the time of this recording. Uh, you guys have a great day.